Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Some people have trouble with a scripture and just throw it out. Did you know Thomas Jefferson did that? He literally used a razor and glue to cut and paste sections of the Gospels to exclude all miracles, even the resurrection, and anything that referred to Jesus as divine. He called it the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth, extracted textually from the Gospels in Greek, Latin, French, and English. God gave us all of the Bible for a reason. Each story, each verse, can teach us if we are willing to look for the hidden treasures there. If we discard certain parts because they're hard to understand, we don't agree with them, or we just plain don't like them, we're not going to get the full picture of God, who he is, or what he's done. Today's passage is one of those stories, so let's dig in and find some treasure. The prophet Elisha had just seen his teacher, mentor, and friend Elijah taken up in a whirlwind and a fiery chariot into heaven. He had been left with Elijah's mantle, representing the power and authority God had given Elijah being transferred to Elisha. With the mantle, God parted the Jordan River for Elisha, then, through him, healed the waters of Jericho. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up the road, some youths came from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. So he turned around and looked at them and pronounced a curse on them in the name of the Lord. And two female bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths. Now one main problem people have with this is the words translated youths in the version I read is often translated little children or boys, and for good reason. The Hebrew words are literally little children. So those of us who know the Lord would immediately reject this. Jesus loved little children. He wouldn't kill a group of kids, would he? Well, he had destroyed all of Korah's family back in number 16, wives, sons, and little children. And several times, God had ordered everyone, including children, in a city destroyed. So this wouldn't be entirely out of character for God, especially if you remember that Bethel, named the house of God by Jacob back in Genesis, had been a stronghold of idol worship in Israel. When the northern kingdom split from the southern kingdom, Jeroboam had set up a golden calf to be worshipped in Bethel. Also, if you consider that the term little child had also been used for young men, students, or just someone who was inexperienced, these youths may have been from a school for false prophets in Bethel, the opposite of the sons of the prophets earlier in the passage who were God's men. Other people object and see Elisha as vindictive and harsh when these youths were just making fun of his baldness. Had the curse come from Elisha's desire for vengeance, God would not have said amen to it. As Proverbs 26.2 says, Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. Elisha totally left the correction up to the Lord. He just pronounced a curse. The bears were God's idea. Why would God send female bears? In Hosea, when God spoke about his judgment on Israel, He said, I will meet them like a bear deprived of her cubs. Elisha was God's cub, his child. Female bears really make sense here. This gang of youths hollering, go up, bald head, may have been referring to Elijah. You say he went up in a whirlwind? You go up too, and we'll get you out of the way. Or, hey, baldy, where's your fiery chariot? If you've ever been a parent, you know that if someone attacks your child, it's worse than if they've done it to you. So the Lord already had bears on their way before Elisha pronounced this curse. If you notice, the Bible says the bears mauled 42 of the young men. Since there had been a pattern of groups of 50 throughout the stories of Elijah and Elisha, it's probably safe to assume that there was originally 50, and eight of them ran home to tell the tale. 
but it does not say that 42 were killed. Perhaps many were, but I can guarantee the people of Bethel got God's point. Elisha is my prophet. Leave him alone. We can learn here that the Lord is protective of his children. Not that he'll send bears to attack anyone who hurts us, but he doesn't look the other way or let people by with things. So this is a warning for those who don't respect the Lord and his people. How have you seen God being like a mother bear to you? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank you.